Your Excellency approve all of them and you need payment for so many things for them. They are getting more and more comfortable. And I assure them that Your Excellency promised that by the time we proceed on vacation, before we come back, we um, will be happier than we are. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Your administration will not fail. <laughs> No one will stand a chance against Tinubu in his courtroom or any court in Nigeria. What Chief Justice Ariwala did is not right. There are other things he said not covered in the video. He went as far as singing praises for him. We will get back to that in a moment. All these are against the ethics of his profession. He's not supposed to be eulogizing Tinubu in public. We already know that the judicial branch is not independent, but he shouldn't make it very obvious. The fact that he bowed to Tinubu in public means he's pledging his loyalty to him, not the Nigerian constitution. This is the problem with many in Nigeria. They don't seem to understand what patriotism means. They might know, but they always brand critics as unpatriotic. Being patriotic means that you fight for the common good of everyone and the country. There's a reason the constitution separated the three arms of government and leaders of these arms of government should respect that. Being patriotic doesn't mean supporting the government on everything. They are humans. As such, they are bound to make mistakes. Blind loyalty to leaders in government is not patriotism. No, you are simply loyal to the leader, not Nigeria. These are two different things people should be aware of because they intentionally lump them together. That everyone who criticizes government is not patriotic. They use words like emergency lovers of Nigeria as if there's a yastic to measure how long someone has been loving the country. These are just mind games and manipulations to cover the main reason they are loyal to individuals and not Nigeria. All the money the CJN said that Tinubu and the federal government allocated to the judiciary of recent, it is not Tinubu's personal money. Any other person could have made the same budget and released the money to the judiciary arm of government. After all, when Tinubu created local government areas in Lagos State during his time as governor, Obasanjo blocked the federal allocations to the local government areas in Lagos because Obasanjo argued that Tinubu didn't have the power to create new local government areas. Yes, he was right. Before a governor could do that, there must be a constitutional amendment. So it was until the new local governments were changed to LCDAs. That was when the allocation was released to the Lagos state government. That separation of powers, no one needed to bow to anyone or pledge loyalty before their money was released to them. They simply followed the law and in the end, Nigeria won. By the way, the reason Tinubu created new local government areas was because he never believed that Kanu state is more populated than Lagos state. At the time, he conducted a census of the buildings in Lagos State and came up with an estimate far higher than the official population figures given to Lagos State by federal government. He wondered why Kanu State should have 44 local government areas while Lagos State with a higher population, only 20 local government areas. So he brought a bill to the Lagos State House of Assembly and created additional local government areas, bringing the total to 57 local government areas. All this Tinubu did at the time, many must have called him unpatriotic because he opposed the status quo, but he was fighting for justice and equity. Today, many others are fighting for the same justice, equity and good governance against Tinubu. His party men are calling them unpatriotic, so people should understand how political jobbers operate. Again. Being loyal to an individual who happens to be the leader at the moment is not patriotism. The person is simply loyal because of his selfish interests, what he can get from the leader or what Nigerians call stomach infrastructure. Now, back to other things the CJN said that are not covered in the video. He said, quote, May the Lord continue to bless you and your administration. Let your sheep land and birth beautifully. We shall continue to pray for your administration because there are many good things in the pipeline for Nigerians." Unquote. It's very unfortunate that he went as far as singing praises for Tinubu. 
This sounds like what a politician will say, not what a chief justice of the federation will say. Maybe they became embarrassed after the deed has been done. That's why this video can't be found online. Even this one from Viable cut off abruptly. So what these old men are doing when they are supposed to be living exemplary lives for the youths to emulate? It wasn't so in the past. Eminent jurists like Kayo De Eso, Oputa and others of blessed memory wouldn't have done this in public. Even abroad, they try to pretend so as not to send the wrong message. The CJN is literally telling the world that Tinubu controls the judiciary. This is not right. You don't see this kind of praise singing in other countries. Despite the Nigerian constitution not being perfect, the judiciary arm can actually fund itself effectively without begging the executive branch for money. There are many courts under the control of the federal judiciary. They should find ways to improve their revenue. When they add the improved revenue to their statutory allocation, it will definitely be enough to take care of their welfare and expand the courts. If they do all this, there will be no need to eulogize anyone or sing praises. Forget about African culture of bowing down when greeting a senior person or someone you hold to high esteem. The position the CJN holds in government forbids him from doing this and not in public for that matter. Why would anyone file a case against Tinubu or the government when he has openly pledged his loyalty to him? What of if Tinubu commits an impeachment offense in the future? Will the CJN play his role in the impeachment process? Absolutely not. He will save him at the expense of saving Nigeria. All of them have become politicians and if a politician did what he did, that's understandable, but not a politician that's among the leaders of another branch of government. Oh, wait a minute, the speaker also did the same. So far, so good, Your Excellency. The House is very supportive of you. The House loves you very well. There is hardly any decent voice in the House today and yesterday against you for any of your policies. The House has honored you supportive of what you bring and we shall continue to strive in ensuring that we operate as one the executive and the legislator together we want to ensure that whatever you bring we see the light of the day both in the house of representatives and in the senate you can see an example of the acid taste of members support and solidarity just within the last three, four days, about three bills came from the presidency and they were all expected to be treated expeditiously. And the House and the Senate do not relent, Your Excellency, in ensuring that we deliver a miracle because what we did is just short of being called a miracle. This is wrong. The Speaker should represent the people, telling Tinubu that they passed the bills he sent in a few hours and that there's no dissenting voice against him in the House, simply shows that the House can never do their oversight functions against the executive branch under this current Speaker. House members are not in a court, therefore, there must be dissenting voices. There's nothing wrong in that. It is the beauty of democracy. Anybody dissenting is doing his job as a federal lawmaker. He might be doing it because he's trying to protect his constituency, that sent him to represent them, or he might have seen outlandish, unrealistic figures quoted by the executive branch, like the Senate did. Imagine drilling one borehole for 192 million naira. The biggest construction company in Nigeria wouldn't charge that much for one borehole. Why would they even use a huge contractor when they can even find a small contractor in their constituency and give him the job? So these politicians are the same. They give the executive branch an open check to withdraw any amount they want without any checks and balances. Because they insert inflated contracts in budgets, the House will never investigate or oppose the executive branch. Not that the House must oppose the executive branch all the time, but there's a reason the Constitution gave them the powers to hold the executive branch to account. When the Speaker of the House is pledging loyalty to Tinubu, they can never do their job effectively. In the end, Nigerians will pay the price for their ineffectiveness. 
Most Nigerian politicians can't draw the line between governance and politics. When someone is elected to a position, the person must do his job effectively giving his 100%. You do not have to abandon your responsibility because of political solidarity. Governance should never be personalized around individuals. Rather, Nigerian politicians should try and build strong institutions that will outlast individuals. This will ensure the survival of our democracy. Just like when Obasanjo wanted a third term, Nigerian patriots at the time in the National Assembly saved our democracy. Many must have called some of them on patriotic elements at the time. But the actions of the brave patriots at the National Assembly made sure that Nigeria's democracy was not turned to what's obtainable in Francophone countries, where they extend their tenures anyhow they want. Imagine the height the National Assembly reached in the mid-2000s and compare that to the lows of the National Assembly today. From sending prayers to legislators, to over-inflated budgetary allocations and budget pardon scandals to the tune of 3 trillion naira, May the voices of reason and dissent continue rising in the National Assembly to fight for the common good of all Nigerians. Thanks for watching.